conceptual people talk about it all of the elements hello everybody dr rick wallace dropping in on you hope everybody is having a good day. I've been having all kind of technical difficulties uh, with the equipment. I'm gonna have to have it checked and calibrated from the sound to uh, the camera. The camera has always done something weird whenever I changed from my old system to this one. Uh, but anyway, uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you guys for stopping in. Uh, if you haven't already, click the like button, click, click the uh, share button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel uh, and you like what you are hearing, please do so because there will be far more following. Um, there's over 1,500, almost 1,600 videos, um, maybe 10 short of 1,600 videos and so much more to come. All of it is free access. Uh, we'll remind you that we are right now in the midst of a fundraiser uh, for those who believe in the work we do in the community you will see links in the description box to support the work we do if you've been around long enough you know if you haven't been around long enough there's also a link to our official website which will give you plenty of enlightenment there's over 600 articles over 30 something different pages and tabs of works and services and resources we offer so definitely check all of that out I want to talk to you for a minute and this is going to be initially by one real simple uh, issue uh, that I've kind of been tra tracking for the last year or so uh, but then I'm looking at some other things that have taken place since I put it on my uh, roster to do the video today so I'm going to try to touch it all but I'm gonna try to do it in a very uh, brief and succinct way uh, <clears throat> again forgive whatever this camera is deciding to do uh, more than it normally does uh, but hey as long as you can hear me uh, most of you have watched me enough to know how I look nothing nothing <laughs> new <laughs> nothing new uh, but hey Let's start with this. Another black woman, uh, a captain, um, a, a correctional officer who was a captain in New, uh, uh, in, in New, in the New York correctional uh, system, uh, went to the DR for plastic surgery, ran into another one of those quacks in the DR, and she didn't come home alive. Um, again, this is a woman who is a professional, had been in her career long enough to achieve the status of captain and uh, obviously had the means to go and do this. Uh, from what I've been able to research and um, I'm still validating it but it's coming from a pretty good source and you know uh, when she was married which was interesting to me because according to what I've been able to gather her husband told her he was happy with the way she was so it wasn't her husband's prodding that did it he told her he was happy the way she was she didn't need to do it this was something internal this was something she was dealing with and she felt the need to do uh, I'm not here to crush on anybody I'm not here to uh, attack what I'm here to do is pose a question that we all must grapple with as African Americans and I think that uh, we tend to avoid it. I think that we tend to dismiss it. I think that we don't want to deal with a bunch of the elephants in the room, uh, two of which I'm going to talk about today. The first one is self-love, uh, a, a keen self-awareness of who we are so that we fall in love with ourselves, so that we see the uniqueness of who we are and the beauty of who we are as we are, and we uh, move away from this increasing gravity to aspire to be something that others define as beauty. We have been grappling with others defining beauty and brilliance and brains and, and class and professionalism and everything else from the way we wear our hair to the way we dress to the way we move is all defined by someone else. And now here we are risking our lives on a consistent basis. First and foremost, even in the best conditions, plastic surgery is not a walk in, walk out, cool little thing. 
Kanye West lost his mom to foot surgery. I have a friend of mine who lost his mom to having a bunion removed. Let me tell you something. Anytime that you're talking about anesthesia, anytime you're talking about any type of invasive action to your body, you're putting your body at risk. And so you must always be willing to ask yourself, what am I risking it for? And you have to look at yourself. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do to improve your health, to improve your appearance. If you're not happy with your appearance, that does not call for you to go under the knife. That does not call for you to get crazy types of injections and a bunch of other things that have been proven to be detrimental to your health. Um, and again, it's your body. Yes, it is. But people who love you are the ones who deal with this type of situation when it happens. Um, and... You know, my thing is there are too many things taking us away from our loved ones that we can't really control. So the things we can control, we should really be looking at and caring about. And so the more I looked at it, I said, OK, what's driving this? And immediately something else comes in. Young girl playing online, playing with a gun, blows her brains out. Another one sits up and goes into a store where they're supposed to be delivering a battery and shoots a customer. And on and on and on. And so where is it coming from? And you can sit up and say, well, wait a minute. We are literally being talked into our demise by way of words to a beat. Predominantly rap music, but a lot of other uh, R&B songs bring, bring the heat too. And you listen to R. I mean, you listen to H. You listen to hip hop. It's hard to find a song that doesn't have uh, gunplay, <clears throat> drug use, drug dealing, misogyny, disrespect, and dismissal and abuse of women, uh, killing brothers. We, you 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 can't go a month without at least one or two rappers getting popped uh, for all kind of crazy reasons. Man, you know, I sit up and I study crime. And what I find is that despite what we, I mean, in addition to what we see in, 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 in the news and on social media, I'm sitting up and I'm looking and for the last year I've been studying these deaths and in the black community and so many of them are either aspiring or underground, meaning they're not well known in the commercial industry but have respect among their peers. These are some of the rappers that are being killed and they're glorifying that life. If one rapper got killed, he wasn't even about that life, came from a good family but needed to get some cred, sit up and rob the wrong people. They sent people from Alabama all the way up to Atlanta and they killed him while he was visiting his, going, getting ready to go in and visit his girl who had just had his kid. And but what, what we're saying, but, 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 but it's just music. No, no, let me explain something to you. What's crazy is the vast majority of African Americans have some sort of Christian background or a lot of Islam. And in both instances, what you find is an understanding of the power of the word. Uh, in, in the book of Proverbs, it tells you that the power of the word is in what? The tongue. I mean, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Excuse me. The power of life is and death is in the tongue. All of this stuff is pulled back from maybe five to 10,000 years before Proverbs out of Kemet and out of the Nile civilization. And so this is an old understanding that words have power. And most black people will tell you words have power. Most black people understand what you say, be careful with your self-talk. The problem is they don't get it when it's a beat attached to it. They don't get that you are literally being subliminal, subliminally programmed to destroy one another. You don't get that you are being subliminally programmed that you're not good enough. You don't get that you're being subliminally programmed to be uh, aggressive and distrusting towards one another. That literally we are being programmed to destroy ourselves by way of word and a beat. Instagram is constantly pushing an image to aspire to. The thing is that most women, non-black women, aspire to have the bodies of black women, and black women are going off and creating something unnatural and symmetrically uh, similar for 
a lack of a better term, everybody's starting to look alike. Where's the beauty in? The beauty is always in your uniqueness. Yes, there's a common move, you know, there's the curvature, there's the, the beauty to the curvature, there's the the uniqueness in the walk. There are some things that our women have that other women simply don't possess. And even when they try to emulate it, they don't come close. It's a beauty in it and, it, and it's ours. And we are trading in that uniqueness for assimilation into an idea about what makes us beautiful. And it's not just that. We got too many of our young boys who are not protecting. That's why the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative is so important. Look, we got to show these boys who they are long before they get bombarded with this stuff on these devices that's coming at them by way of music, by way of videos. Watch any video from the last 20 years, and it's gunplay, it's dope, it's, it's, it's about illegally getting the bag. If you got the bag legally, it don't count. There's no street credibility in earning it with your genius. You got people who literally earn their paper legitimately because they literally are geniuses, but they will turn around and say they got it dirty because that's what credibility is. And what you're doing is robbing yourself of an opportunity to be an inspiration to a young child that says you don't have to go out and be a dope dealer, an athlete, or an entertainer to get the bag, to get the paper, to build something that you can pass on to your kids. You can use your brilliance, you can use your mind. You can literally be a creator of a thing that does not even exist and totally blow the top off of what you're capable of bringing into your bank account and never have to cross the line of legality, morality, or ethics at any point in time. But rather than do that, I'm gonna go over here and pretend like I'm everybody else that fell victim to the suggestion that I have to be a criminal in order to have some type of financial success. That's a problem. Words and a beat. And the words don't even have to be creative anymore. The words don't even have to have uh, any, any, any creative influence. Simple. Everything is now the beat. Everything is hidden behind a dope beat. And then you just come up and you just keep saying it over and over again. Let me tell you something that's called subliminal suggestion. It's the way they get you to move on uh, commercials. There's a reason why people spend so much money every year at McDonald's eating that nasty food. The power of subliminal suggestion. The power of planting mental, emotional seeds. The power of not knowing how to filter and knowing what you should be consuming. Nobody's guarding their gates. Nobody is guarding the gates of our children. Nobody is guarding the gates of our lovely, beautiful uh, daughters who are growing up and aspiring to be something that's less than what they already are because they've been told it's better. We have a responsibility to ourselves. We have a responsibility to our people. We have a responsibility to our progeny to rise to a new height of what we should be, knowing who we are, a self-awareness, an identity. That's what uh, Black Man Lead is about. That's what socializing young boys or girls is about. It's about introducing them to their identity, giving them an anchor in their identity that's so strong that they are not moved away from it when they're introduced to new ideas, new suggestions, uh, new compulsions. They understand who they are at a level that anchors them, and they move in that identity. Their identity is a con directly connected to their purpose. Their purpose is directly connected to their destiny. Their destiny is what pulls them through the point of their life where they leave an imprint that serves as a legacy of their being here so that people after they're gone still talk about them, still know who they are and they're still a positive influence because they came, they saw their conquer based off of their identity. We are allowing ourselves to be robbed of it. We're allowing ourselves to be defined by something that does not have our best interest at heart. There's a reason why a song about murder, a black man murdering a black man gets 
100 times more rotation than a song about a black man loving his family and being committed to being with his family. It simply is not the narrative that they want written. It's simply not the narrative that they need. They need us to be divided. They need us to be weak. They need us to be unpurposed. They need us not to have a sense of self at a level that drives us to do things that will put us in the position of power. They know if they can keep us divided. They know if they can destroy and disintegrate the black family, that there's no way that ch black children can be properly taught what's necessary to empower them. Then they will filter into their minds and feed into their minds the things that they want them to do, the things they want them to be, the things and the behaviors they want them to perpetuate. Then they will turn around and malign them for perpetuating it. They will feed them all this crap about who they are to get them to do and behave a certain way. And the moment they do it, they say, see, this is why we can never, ever be uh, fully supportive of the black community. This is why that, you know, they have to be treated this way. This is why we have to put down black men in the street. This is why we have to sit up and do X, Y, Z. This is why we can never sit up and uh, entrust them with anything of significance. And they consistently do this over and over and over again. It's time to take the reins of our destiny into our own hands. It's time to start building and creating and, 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 and developing content and, 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 and stimuli that we superimpose and inculcate into the psyches and the mentalities of our children at very early ages. And then we must isolate and insulate them until it takes hold and takes root, until it anchors itself into their very existence and identity. It's our responsibility. It is nobody's responsibility but ours to build a situation in which our children can thrive. Right now, we have not done that. We have not even come close to doing that. It's on us. And so I say that, and I'm going to leave you uh, with this. I'm tired of hearing about sisters losing their lives going to the DR. I'm tired of hearing about young black men being shot dead in the street by one another. I'm tired of hearing about intimate partner homicide, intimate partner violence. I'm tired of hearing about the rise in suicides among black men and young black girls under the age of 13. Uh, I'm tired of the economic disparity and despair. I'm tired of it because it's not something that we have to experience. But we don't want to get involved. We don't want to be committed. We want to talk. We want to whine. We want to complain. We want to look as as if we, we have become so accustomed to being helpless that we don't even move. We keep waiting on somebody else to do something that we have the very capacity to do ourselves. At what time will enough be enough? That's the question. On that note, I'm going to exit. Uh, I'm going to get back into what I need to get done for today. But um, we have work to do. Um, as far as what we do at the Odyssey Project, we will continue to do our work. What I do at Rick Wallace Enterprises, working with people in, in, in becoming better, I will continue to do. I will do everything I can. As long as I have breath, I will work to make people better. But we need to come together as a collective. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Don't forget to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. On that note, I am out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.